up from the sand and stop looking for grains of evidence, you will see millions of tons of rocks right in front of your eyes giving you some pretty damn good evidence. Okay? The Grand Pyramid of Giza is made of 2,300,000 stones. 2,300,000 stones. It stands at 481 feet of altitude. Its base is 13 square feet. Uh, 13 square ac acres. 13 square acres. That is extremely large. When you take survey pictures, satellite picture of the apex of the Grand Pyramid at Giza, it is one quarter of an inch off the center of the base. That's 13 square acres. 13 acres square one quarter of an inch off center. That's after placing 2,300,000 stones that you have cut with copper tools. <laughs> yeah, you need some pretty good moonshine to do that one. Well, I guarantee you that is extremely difficult to reproduce. In fact, there is no way engineering companies on this planet could ever reproduce that. Even with all of our modern technology, if we give them billions and billions of dollars, they couldn't come up with anything like that. Because if you cut, if you divide a quarter of an inch error by 2,300,000 stone, the accuracy at which you're placing these stones is outrageous. And we can't do anything like that. Our most accurate buildings, like um, telescopes, are not that accurate. They're not even close to having that kind of accuracy. Go ahead. So you could say we've just barely come out of the Dark Ages. Basically, or we got into the Dark Ages. Yeah. Because we, it seems that there was people that were doing a heck of a lot better than us. Sorry. <laughs> um. So what I'm, when I was looking at this, I'm like, wait a minute. That doesn't happen that way. If you. If, you know, why is it that we think, you know, that this is taught as facts to children in schools every day? That the pyramids were built by people pulling on vine ropes? <laughs> and you know why? Because in the 1800s, a bunch of Eng English archaeologists showed up in Egypt, and that's the only thing they could come up with. And because they had PhDs and they were very respected archaeologists, since then, everybody is repeating the same thing. And somehow, a theory that's completely unproven became a fact. In fact, you will not get a PhD in archaeology if you say anything else about the pyramids. I guarantee you that. You cannot get a PhD in archaeology by saying the pyramids were built by little green man. <laughs> this is one of the problems with education. A whole bunch of people repeating at what they've all been taught doesn't advance the field very rapidly. Because everybody is repeating the same thing. You're not going anywhere. So... Uh, you know, but they, these archaeologists never actually, you know, I, I, I know they're not mathematicians, but this is simple mathematics, okay? You take the number of stone, they tell you that the pyramids had to be built in 20 years, okay? So that the dynastic Egypt worked. 
And then you calculate how fast they had to put the stones in. At, at seven days a week, 10 hours a day, 365 days a year, for 20 years, they had to place the stone every two minutes to finish the pyramid on time. With that level of accuracy, never mind. But then the archaeologists say, no, oh no, those were farmers. They could only build the pyramids during the time of the flood of the Nile when they couldn't work in the fields. Three months out of the year. See, when they had that three months vacation, hey, let's all go and build a huge pyramid. So they went out there and built pyramids three months